Gwarada a Chroeswyn Gwasanaeth ar y Trydydd Sil an Advent. Good morning and welcome to our service on this third Sunday in Advent. As you can see, I have the Advent ring behind me, so I'm going to light three candles today as we give thanks for the ministry of John the Baptist. You may have noticed that the third candle is a pink candle because today is the Sunday in the middle of Advent when we start to rejoice a little bit more after the Advent purple. So we have the pink candle as a slight relaxation from this severe um, purple candles and the quality of the season. So let us pray. Eternal God, as the darkness beckons closer and the night time lingers on, we light a candle to dispel the darkness of our hearts and chase away the shadows of our minds, so that he of whom John the Baptist spoke may find a bright and clear path and find us ready and willing to welcome him, the light of the world, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to share my screen now so that we can sing together the first hymn, which is on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry.
You can follow the order of service on the PDF file, which is posted onto our Facebook page and also sent out via email. And you can also follow it in Daily Prayer, the Church in Wales Daily Prayer book. And I'll announce the pages as we go along. So we begin with the introduction for Advent Daily Prayer, pages 76 and 77. Paratoch and Arani Aluch, for the Rarbloid, in Yonuch and a Tifethuch, Griforth in Duni. You are blessed, sovereign God, Lord of all. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high breaks upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice to give you praise. Blessed be God forever. We turn now to daily prayer, pages 20 and 21. And let's take a moment of silence as we prepare to confess our sins. Let us confess our sins to the Father and seek his pardon and peace. Almighty and merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart and we have not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Bydd y ddiw hwllalliog, sy'n maddau i bawb sy'n wir eti feiriol, tri garhau wrthych, a chryd hai o bechod, eich cadan hai mewn daioni, Ach cadw yn y bywyd tragwyddol, trwy Iesu Gris, Dein Harglwydd. Amen. We turn to pages 24 and 25. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Gogoniant i'r tad ac i'r mab. Ac i'r ysbryd glân, fel yr oedd yn y dechrau, y mae yn awr, ac y bydd yn wastad, yn oes oes oed. Amen. Early in the morning my prayer comes before you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Y rwyt yn llefaru yn bynghalon ac yn dweud heisio fy wyneb. Am hynny, ceisiaf dy wyneb o arglwy. Crist tri garcha. Crist tri garcha. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our psalm today is Psalm 146, verses 4 to 10, and you'll find this on page 640 and 641. I'm going to say the psalm in English. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong, 
and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from the prophecy of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Dau a darlleniad o'r hen destament, o brofwydoliaeth Sephania, penod tri, adnod indeg pedwar, i dai ddeg. I'm going to read it in Welsh. Con ferch saion, gweithen ichel o Israel, llawen ha a gorfol edda, ad chwll galon, ferch Jerusalem. Trodd yr orglwyd y gos boddi wrthyd, a symud y lynion. A mae brenin Israel yr orglwyd yn dyganol, ac nid ofni ddrwg mwyach. Y dydd hwnnw dywedu'r wrth Jerusalem, nac ofna saion, ac na leisau dy ddwylo. A mae'r orglwyd dy ddiw yn dyganol, yn rhyfelwr i thweddedu, fe orfoledd yn llawen, yn o ti, ath adnewyddu yn ei gariad. Llawen ych y ynod a chan, fel ar ddydd gwyl. Symudaf aflwydd amaith o ddiwrthyd, rhag bod i ti gywilydd o'i blegyd. Wel e fi yn talu i'r pwyth i'r othrymwyr yn yr amser hwnnw, gwaredaf y rhai clof a chasglaf y rhai gwasgaredig, a rho fydd ynt glod ac enw yn holl dyr eu gwarth. Y pryd hwnnw, pan fydd yn amser i'ch casglu, mi ddof â chwi adref, oherwydd rho fi chwi, glod ac enw ymhlith holl boblwydd y ddaea, pan adferaf eich llwyddiant yn eich gwydd, medd yr orglwydd. Dyma aer yr orglwydd, diolch a fywy ddiw. Y canticl o'r efengil, y Benedictus, the Gospel canticl, the Benedictus, Pages 28 and 29. I'm going to say this in Welsh. Bendig edig roedd o orglwydd hi'w Israel. Am iddo am weld a'i bobl a'i prynu rydyd. Cododd waredigaeth gadan i ni, yn hi Dafydd ei was. Fel y llefarodd trwy enau i brwffwydu sanctaidd yn yr oesoedd a fi, chwaredigaeth rhag ein gylynion ac o afael pawb sydd yn ein casau. Fel hyn y cymerodd trwy garedd ar ein hynafiaid a chofio ei gyfamod sanctaidd. Y llw y dyngodd wrth Abraham ein tad. Y roddau i ni gael ein hachub o afael gylynion. A'i addoli yn ddi ofn, mewn sangteidrwydd a chyfiawndedd, ger ei fôn ef holl ddyddiau ein bywyd. A thithau fy mhlentyn, gelwyr di yn broffwyd y gor eichaf, oherwydd byddi'n cerdded o flaen yr orglwydd 
i baratoi e lwy brai. I roi yw bobl wi bodaeth am waredigaeth, trwy fyddeant e pechodau. In yw trigaredd calon ein diwd, fe ddaw ar wawr ddydd o ddechod un plyd. I lywychi ar y rhai sy'n eistedd yn hywyllwch casgod angau, a chyfeirio ein traed i ffordd tangnefedd. Gogoniant i'r tad, ac i'r mog, ac i'r ysbryd glon, fel yr oedd yn y dechrau, y mae yn awr, ac y bydd yn wastad, yn oes oes oedd. Amen. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. I'm going to read in English. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Fair fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the foot root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cast down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we've lit the third candle on the Advent ring to give thanks for John the Baptist and his role in preparing the way for Jesus to begin his ministry. The third candle also stands for joy and is traditionally pink, giving us a break from the sombre purple of the rest of the season. Advent is a time of preparation when we look forward to Jesus' return in glory and also as we prepare to celebrate his birth at Christmas. John the Baptist had a special role in preparing the way for Jesus to begin his ministry. 
John is not someone we would naturally think of as being a character in the Christmas story. He doesn't feature in nativity plays, for example. But Luke reminds us at the beginning of his gospel of the connection between John and his relative Jesus, as he interweaves the story of the birth of these two special sons. Both stories involve a miracle, and both involve the angel Gabriel foretelling the baby's birth. John was the son of Zechariah, a priest who served in the temple in Jerusalem and who lived in the hill country of Judea. He and his wife Elizabeth were childless and both of them were getting on in years. They were God-fearing people who were faithful in worship and keeping God's commandments. John's birth was foretold by the angel Gabriel, who appeared to Zechariah while he was carrying out his duties in the temple, offering incense. The angel told Zechariah that John would turn many people back to God and make them ready to receive the Lord when he came. Zechariah found it hard to believe that he and Elizabeth would have a child. And as a result, he found himself unable to speak until John was born. We can imagine Elizabeth's joy as she discovered that she was pregnant. Luke tells us that she saw it as a sign of God's favour, that her shame at being childless was finally being taken away. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to tell her that she too was going to bear a son, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. As a sign that his words were true, the angel told her that her relative Elizabeth was also expecting a son, despite her age. For nothing will be impossible for God, he told her. When she heard this news, Mary hurried off to visit Elizabeth, travelling from Nazareth to Judea. Mary spent the next three months staying with Elizabeth and Zechariah. No doubt the two expectant mums were a great support to each other as they looked forward to the birth of their sons and thought about their God-given roles. When John was born, there was much excitement amongst his family and friends. Zechariah named him John, the name the angel had given to him. And as he did so, he found he was able to speak once again. The first words he spoke were a song of praise to God which we know of as the Benedictus, the canticle which is said and sung at morning prayer. And we have said it already this morning. Zechariah praised God for raising up a mighty saviour, a descendant of King David. But halfway through the canticle, he began to speak to the baby John telling him that he was called to be a prophet of the Most High, who would go before the Lord to prepare his way, proclaiming the message about the salvation and forgiveness which Jesus was coming to bring. Our Gospel reading today takes us forward about 30 years, to the time when John has grown up, and begun his ministry. Luke is very precise in telling us that John began his ministry in the 15th year of the reign of the emperor Tiberius. He even tells us that Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and that Herod and Philip, the sons of Herod the Great and Lysanias, 
were ruling over different parts of the territory under the direction of the Roman government. Luke also tells us that Annas and Caiaphas were the Jewish high priests at the time. At this particular moment in history, John began his ministry in the wilderness near the River Jordan, urging the people to repent of their sins and to be baptized in the river as a sign of the new life which they were beginning. John didn't mince his words. He called his hearers a brood of vipers, trying to escape God's judgment. John's message is still relevant to us today, although perhaps we wouldn't call people a brood of vipers. John demanded true repentance, a complete turning away from sin and turning back to God. He wanted his hearers to show that their repentance was real by turning away from their sins and changing their behavior. Bear fruits worthy of repentance, he told them. It wasn't enough for them to trust in the fact that they were children of Abraham. They were to show by their behavior that they were worthy to be his descendants members of God's chosen people. When the crowds asked John what they should do, his answer was very practical. Those who had two coats or extra food were to share with those who had none. Tax collectors were not to take more than the tax which was due. Soldiers were not to use their position and power to threaten people. Instead, they were to be content with their pay. These are the fruits of repentance, which God wanted to see in people's lives. It's not surprising that some people thought that John was the promised Messiah. But he was quite clear in telling them that his role was prepare the way, to prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. I baptize you with water, he said, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John's role was to prepare the way for Jesus so that when Jesus began his ministry, the people would be ready to listen to him. This Advent, we begin a year of discipleship in our diocese. John's message challenges us to think about our behavior, to consider whether we are generous, fair and considerate in all our dealings with others. It challenges us to think about our discipleship. So let us show that our repentance is real by changing our attitudes and behavior as we seek to follow in Jesus' footsteps as his disciples each day through the coming year. Amen. We turn back to daily prayer to pages 160 and 161 for Canticle number 18, A Song of the Lord's Return. And I'm going to read this in English. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who announce peace, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, you watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. For with their own eyes they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. 
The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed, pages 30 and 31. I'm going to read this in Welsh. Preda fy niw dad holl gyfoethog, preawdwr nefoedd a daia. Preda fy nies i grist unig bag diw, ein harglwydd ni, ac ein hedlwyd o'r ysbryd glan, a aned o fair forwyn, a ddiodd efo dan Pontius Pilate, a groes hoelwyd, a fi farw, ac a gladwyd. Disganodd i blith y meirw. Ar y trydydd dydd fe atgyfododd, esganodd i'r nefoedd, ac y mae'n eistedd ar ddeu heilau'r tad, ac fe ddaw i farnu'r byw ar meirw. Credaf yn yr ysbryd lân, yr eglwys lân gatholig, pam un y saint, mae ddeant bechodau, atgyfodiad y corff, ar bywyd tregwyddol. Amen. Gweddiwn dros yr eglwys a thros y byd, let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for Bishop Andy John, Archbishop-elect of Wales, for Joanna, our Bishop, Dorian, our Archdeacon, and the ministry team and congregations of the churches of Bro St. Clair and Bro Cadverthin. We pray for the clergy and people of the churches of Astrad Meirig, St. John the Baptist, and Betus Bledrus, St. Bledrus, or St. Michael. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tywys bobl y wlad hon a'r holl gen hedloedd yn ffyrdd cafiawnder a heddwch, fel y rhan ffydeddwn ein gilydd a chydweithio er lles pawb. Gweddiwn dros ein llywodraeth yn San Stefan ac anghair dydd, pwy dydd ein tweithredu gyda doethineb ac uniondeb, Wrth ydd ynt wneud penderfyniadau sy'n effeithio ar fywydau eraill. Ar glwydd yn dydrwy garedd, gwrand o ein gweddi. Teach us to respect the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources wisely to your glory and for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bendithia bow by my in bowidai and clum or thain bowidai ni. Bother dini was an athi cree stunthint. A harry in gilid, well am I ev and in carry ni. Argloid under regarded. Grand o ein gweddi. Comfort and heal all who suffer, in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
We remember those who have asked for our prayers today. Mildred, Muriel, Jean and Bert, Will, Carwin and Cecil, Peggy, Arwin and Anita, Elsie, Jeff and Anne, Adrian and Faye, Jill, Ian, Martha, Vi, Ruth, Peter and family. Simon, Wendy, Lynette, Ella, Peter, Ron and Jennifer, Liz, Sarah, Nina and Maya. In a moment of silence, we remember others known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Cram to Adnom, Urthini Govio, a fai honey, a vivaru and hang never creased. Proverb a guaredur at Gavodedig, if in tran, an ala wenith. Covion and in wedig, Ovelia, Beverly. Dudley. Argloid and Dudrigareth, Rando in Gwedi. Lord, hear the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together to say the Lord's Prayer in the language of your choice. Ein tard, ar hwn oed sy'n yn efoi, sanctaithia de enw, dele de dernas, gwnela de wellis, megis yn yn ef, felly ar y ddau er hefyd. Darw i ni heddiw ein bara beinyddiol, a mada i ni ein dyledion, Fel y myddeu'n nynnau i'n dyledwyr. Ac nac arwain ni i brofed digaid, eith yr gwared ni rhag drwg, can i seiddo ti o dernas, ar gallu, ar gogoniant, yn oes oes oed. Amen. The Collect for today, the third Sunday in Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'll collect Amdang Neved, the second collect for peace, pages 38 and 39. Oedd yw awdur tangnefedd a chawr cytundeb, y mae dadnabod di yn bywyd tragwyddo, a thwasanaethu yn rhoddid perfaid. Am ddiffyn ni rhag holl ymysodiadau ein gelynion, fel a nynnau'n llwyr am ddiried yn dynodded, nad ofn nhw'n allu neb ond gwrthwynebwyr, trwy Iesu Grist ein horglwydd. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this new day. Defend us by your mighty power, that we may be kept free from all sin and safe from every danger, 
and enable us in everything to do only what is right in your eyes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Llywyrch et crist hael cafiawnder arnoch, a chwali y tywyllwch o'ch blaen, a bendydd diw holl a lleog, a tad, a mab, ar y sbridlan, a fo yn eich plith, a gydrigo gydych chwi, yn wastad. Amen. I'm going to share the screen again now for our second hymn. And you have a choice this time. You can sing it in Welsh or in English. Clwch yr eglir lais yn galw, hark a thrilling voice is sounding. Let me try that again. And finally, I have some announcements for you. The God Beyond the Pews 2022 calendar is on sale and available in our churches at seven pounds bargain price. And there are some beautiful pictures from the Instagram page. Many thanks to Martine for producing this. So do please either order copies, there are order forms, or if there are copies in your church, you can buy straight from the church and the proceeds will be going to the LMA. Today is the last day of the Christmas tree festival at St. Clair's in St. Mary Magdalene's church and the church will be open until 5 p.m. Entry three pounds to include mince pie and a hot drink. And this evening there will be a concert to close the festival with Boys of Ellen and Caitlin Williams, and that will be at six o'clock. And tickets for this are five pounds. The proceeds will go to the upkeep of the church 
and it's well worth seeing if you haven't seen the Christmas tree festival yet, do go and have a look. O Deo Chacatholun, O come let us adore him, the Christmas story retold by some of the key people who were witnesses to the events, with some of our local choirs taking part, will be broadcast on our Facebook page and YouTube channel at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and copies of the CD are available to purchase at a cost of five pounds each, the proceeds to the LMA. So do please let Envis know if you would like to order a copy or more than one copy. There are several carol services taking place this Sunday and next Sunday. This afternoon, there's one with Cantorion Llandauror at Abernant St. Lucia's Church at 2 p.m. Also this afternoon at St. Martin's Merthyr at 3 p.m. and Llanfihangel Abercoin at 2 p.m. And then next Sunday, there's one at St. David's Merthyr, sorry, St. David's Maidrim, and that will be at 3 p.m. And then also at St. Martin's Larn, and that will be at 4 p.m. If you can't remember all this, um, it is on our announcement sheet for this Sunday. There is also a carol service for the Mother's Union Deanery Churches, which is being held on Tuesday, the 14th of December at 2 p.m. in St. Mary's Tlantluch. If you'd like to go to that, do please um, let Aerith know. There will be a joint carol service via Zoom led by the Reverend Caris Butler, Minister of Larn Chapel, and that will be on Wednesday, the 22nd of December at 6.30 p.m. So do please let Envis know if you would like to have the Zoom link. I should also say that St. Cunning's Church, Tlangunin, will have the Christmas story, and that will take place next Sunday at 10 o'clock in Tlangunin Church. This evening, there is evening prayer at Larn. No, it's not evening prayer, I beg, beg your pardon. It is Holy Eucharist at Larn at 6 p.m. Services for next Sunday, 9.30 Holy Eucharist, 9.30 Morning Prayer, 9.45 Morning Prayer, 9.45 Holy Eucharist, Mirtha, 10 o'clock Holy Eucharist, St. Clair's, 10 o'clock Christmas Story and Carol Slangunin, 10.30, Holy Eucharist, Laan, 11 o'clock, Holy Eucharist, Trele Harbetus, and then the carol services, Maidrim at 3 p.m. and Laan at 4 p.m. We continue with our usual activities, the Eucharist via Zoom on Sundays at 12 noon and coffee afternoon on Wednesday afternoons at 12 at 2 p.m. If you'd like the link, do let us know. And also our usual Facebook services, Sunday morning at nine o'clock morning prayer, Thursday morning, half past eight morning prayer, and the weekly message on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. The Thursday morning service will be changing to Friday morning for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. So look out for that change. I think that's about it for now. As you can see, a lot of things are planned and there will be services on Christmas Eve and some on Christmas Day, but we'll announce those nearer the time. They are on the announcements sheet for this Sunday. Betty, poor Bendith, every blessing to you all and thank you for joining me for this service. <laughs>